This is about the 1977, August 15th, Dr. Jerry Renman Big Ear Radio Telescope Wow Signal from Sagittarius. This is a approximate map of the location in the sky where it came from. It was from two different feed horns. Now, there's only a couple of things within the feed horn range. I'm going to show you that. Up there at the top is the actual reference to it, and it happened at hours, minutes, and seconds of 1917. Now, this happened plus or minus in a period of time of maybe one minute, or exactly 72 seconds is when it's done. And it was a perfect curve for matching a radio source that was simply a source that was on. It is a radio telescope. It doesn't point at the sky and pick up optics. It picks up radio signals. And it included these pieces of information. It was angled upward, effectively, at a single angle at 27.03 degrees and minutes. And it was running at 120 megahertz, and it was on picked up on channel 2 of that, which is up 10 kHz, so, or 10 megahertz or something like that. But is it at 120 million, 184,000 cycles per second. And the degree angle for galactic degrees changing deviated at 17.74 for the galactic to 17.94, and that was the range. And the other one was around 11 point something to 11.24. Okay? And Eastern Standard Time, hours, minutes, seconds, was 2200 hours, 15 minutes, through 2200 hours, 16 minutes. And it was a perfect curve fit for that pink spot, the two of them. So it looks kind of like a smile in the sky. Let's move on. So this is the zoom in on it, and I use this to be able to create a lineup with a star mapping program called Stellarium. Now the X3, X1, 5152, and the other stars here, I was able to line up reasonably well. Now I'm going to switch to that, and I'm going to let you look at it. I want you to look at where the pink things are and look just a little bit below it, and you'll see a star. It's a dark one. And that matches that bright spot, the, the one of two of them right there. Now we're going to go back again. And you'll notice it matches up exactly. I managed to get this lineup to work very cleanly, which means I can actually find out what damn star was in there. Now I'm going to have to use the pointer. I hate doing this. Right here, dead middle, is one star in here. It's There's just one. And in here, there's one down here. Those are the only ones it could be from if you want to consider some light source or star in the sky to be it. And again... It looks like this. So that's one of them. And it's listed as a magnitude 10.20, BV.35, etc. And it's listed in a bunch of ways. But it doesn't tell us any specifics about it. So it's not some special star. The next one is this one here. And it's a magnitude 9.6, so it should be brighter. And there's the data for it. <coughs> But it's an individual star, but it doesn't get identified. So let's go back through that. And here, those are the two. And again, that's the map, and that's the lineup. So I was able to find them, but I can't identify which ones they are. But I have that information on the screen, and there's a decent map, finally. Um, but this is a computer-generated map, and I can't get the information about what star that is. But those are the stars those signals would have to come from unless it was some other damn thing. Could have been a lower altitude source. Could have been a ringing noise. Could have been anything. But anyway, that was the wow signal video that I have. I finally, this many years later, after trying to do it two or three years ago, finally got a piece of software to actually do this to where it lined up exactly with these images. I will uh, upload these images to Imager. You'll have them as well as I do. And then from there, someone else can identify the name of the stars and what they really are. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Good luck with that. And those are the only two that are possible. Bye.